Casper Cornish is a ballet dancer from London who's been dancing ever since he was 10 years old and has performed in ballets all over the world. The only job I've had which hasn't been either teaching ballet or performing, basically, I worked in Pizza Hut for two weeks and ended up in an armed robbery and left. So I thought maybe I should just stick to the uh, um, ballet. Casper's sensibilities are about to take a battering as he's going to become a wrestler and will spend the next month being trained by the men from Hammerlock Wrestling, Dave the Tank Stewart and Andre the Sledgehammer Baker. I don't know anything about wrestling. I've seen, I think I've seen Olympic wrestling, but that's different, isn't it? That's different from this. It is different from this, isn't it? <laughs> he's going to eat, you know, he's going to be burning. Um, his lungs are going to be burning, you know, after the first few sessions. He's going to go short, believe me. I'm quite looking forward to it. Casper's going to have to transform himself into a ruthless fighter. And in four weeks' time, we'll have to take on the former NWA world champion, Gary Steele. A panel of three judges will be watching to try and spot the fake. Can Casper fool them? Casper's not performing in ballets, he teaches classical dance to the students at the prestigious Erdang Academy in Covent Garden. I think I'm going to miss teaching, actually. I really enjoy teaching when I'm not dancing. At the end of the arms. Finish just here. OK? I teach every day, and I do enjoy it. I enjoy it a lot, and I, I miss it. So I, flick jet, take I want him back in one piece, <laughs> preferably. He's um, one of my main ballet teachers, so if he comes back with a few bits missing, it'll be a bit difficult. Tommy Padre and fifth. All of us, you know, sort of in the, the in the office, when he said it, we sort of went, mm. wrestling, yeah, you sure, you're positive, you know, because a, a dancer is terrified of injury. But injury isn't the only thing Casper's got to worry about. As well as remembering how to wrestle, whilst he's out there, he's going to have to remember about his persona, the showbiz side of things. I'm less nervous about getting hurt than I am having to... As you said you have to, like, shout at the crowd and all this kind of stuff that I'm a bit worried about. All the time that he's in there, trying to remember his persona, trying to entertain, he's also trying to stop someone pulling his head off at the same time. For the next month, Casper will have to change himself completely, say goodbye to padders and arabesques, and get to grips with body slams and pile drivers, as he goes to live in Chatham with the tank. I feel like I'm a condemned man. God, my heart is racing, isn't it? Come on, come in. Hello. Casper. I'm Casper. Hello, you all right? Oh, yeah, good. I'm Dave. You're Dave. Hi. Come on How in. Do you come do? on in. I'm all right. How did you do, Andre? Casper. Not so bad. How are you? All right, so let's put your stuff down. Okay, yeah. As a journey, all right? Have yeah, it's OK. I fell asleep. Did you? Yeah. Well, you won't be falling asleep much, no, mate, so right. I hope you enjoyed it. <laughs> so listen. Uh, yeah. You know about us, or do you? I know a bit about you, yeah. What do you know about us? You're wrestlers. I won't, I won't believe it all. <laughs> really? But there's a lot of lies going about you. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, what about you? You don't know what I do. We know nothing about you. Have you got any ideas? Not at all. No? I'm a ballet dancer. Body, that's it. Yeah. <laughs> it's true. Should be all right, <laughs> fit, then. Yeah, pretty yeah. fit. But Actually, yeah. all joking aside, you know, ballet, they're very fit guys. You should, yeah, yeah. should be very... His, his fitness and his, uh, like his uh, balance and uh, all that sort of thing it should be very good for what he's going to be doing. Yeah, it could be a good start. All joking aside, yeah, seriously, it will be. It could be a good start. I just got some pads as well, so... Yeah, that's good. Yeah, that's good. Good, good thinking, actually, yeah. All joking aside, yes. Yeah. yeah. You get a lot of burns, you know, like when you first start. Right. It's not just uh, just the the hitting and the impact. You tend to get like a lot of like you know like mat friction burns, burn, yeah. friction burns. Yeah. So if you've got them, not just save a bit of you know bit of skin. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that's encouraging. Yeah. <laughs> that's good. <laughs> cool. All right. Yeah. We saw it. Okay. So you're doing all right. We've already you on there. That's me on that. Yeah. That's me. And you'll meet you'll meet some of the other guys. Great stuff. 
Right. With him dancing and stuff, he's going to have the, uh, the, the, the discipline, natural discipline that's going to be involved in diet and exercise and, and what have you, so, you know, the maybe... You long training sessions, what do you think? Yeah. It? A little bit worried about that. Anything goes, no rules. <laughs> hmm. So, you know, I think is that there's a start there and he seems like a nice guy and he seems like, um, you know, he seems like he wants to do it. Yeah. Casper's hardly had time to unpack before Dave whisks him off to Croydon to see his first ever wrestling match featuring the mighty Tatonka. The aim of professional wrestling isn't to win as quickly as possible, but to put on a spectacular show. What's what Jeff can count up to? And then get a point, and get a, a whip, that's the whip. Oh, yeah. Yeah. A win is given eventually for pinning an opponent's shoulders down for a three count or inflicting so much pain that he has to submit. Ooh, it goes. See that hold he's going there now. Yeah. I'm sure to do that properly tomorrow. Breaking man's arm, don't I? That was good, see? Yeah, yeah. I mean, just, are, you, are you scared? I am a few yeah. Are you looking forward to it, though? Uh, you think you can do it? Do I have to fight them? Oh, you got bigger guys than that. Uh, am I looking forward to it? Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> Casper's got only four weeks until his test, where he'll have to thrill the crowd just like Tatonka. But first, he's got to learn the basic wrestling moves from trainer John Ryan. Okay, so I'm going to start with a very basic back break fall. Okay, I'm going to be squatting down onto the floor, kicking my legs right up above me, throwing both arms out to the side. Okay, so it should look something like this. Okay. And if you go first. Just do one to start with and go through again. Very nice. Good. Very nice. Keep your chin tucked in. Okay, you need to be throwing yourself back more. Don't be so afraid of falling, okay? You, I mean, I realise that it's going to hurt, yeah. and you realise that, but... This is the safest way you're going to fall. If you start falling a different way, then you can injure yourself permanently. You need to hurt yourself. Uh, sorry, fall. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> sorry, before you sit there. You need to fall onto your uh, onto your shoulder blades rather than your lower back. Oh. Much better. Much better. It's getting better. You just need to kick your legs up that little bit further so you don't hit your lower back. Oh, that hurts. So what I'm going to do is take off from both feet. Small run up, take off from both feet, flip myself over, land on my back in that position. Okay? Okay. Okay, that was a little bit more dodgy. You didn't throw yourself in there. Okay? You're right. That was a bit of a bad landing. My back hurts and my knees hurt and it's not my new calling in life. The guys here, Andre and John and David, people I'm working with closely, are concerned about the opinions they tell me about of wrestling, that everybody just thinks it's fake, it's a load of rubbish, which is why they're concerned about making sure it does stay real. Yes, it's a performance, yes, it's full of showbiz and razzmatazz and laughter and, and, and sort of panto feeling, but that the actual wrestling they're doing is completely based on legitimate stuff. Proper throws, proper locks, proper everything. Bruising stuff. As a welcome break from the daily routine of wrestling, Casper is also having lessons with voice and movement coach Barbara Howden. 
It's her job to help turn a mute ballet dancer into a vocal wrestler spoiling for a fight. Hello there. Hi. I'm Barbara. I'm Casper. Can you sit down? Yeah. Most wrestling matches tend to be between good guys and baddies, or heels, as they're known in the trade. Casper's going to be wrestling as a heel, another complete change from what he's used to as a ballet dancer. I mean, in, in sort of dance terms, the, the ballet stuff I've done before, I've generally played heroic characters like princes or, you know, come and kiss the girl, wake her up after 100 years. And that's, it's quite shallow in a way and as a character, but all you have to do is stand there and look like you've saved the day. OK. The things yeah. that really get human beings mad, it's almost our animal instinct, is the minute the chest goes out, and, the, and, and this goes up. It just gets people's backs up in about five seconds. Right. It's really aggressive and a bit strutty. And put the chin in the air. I know that's... Yeah, yeah. And, and that's a real insulting thing you can do at somebody, is just put your chin in the air. Yeah, you can kind Look of... Look down your nose. Yeah, yeah, just absolutely. That's it. I like you to actually put your arms out like that. And so you really open the... Oh, is that, is that killer? Not too... That's OK, no, what, no. Just hurts. Yeah. <laughs> and just, just walk around a bit. And, and don't look at the floor. That's it. Because it is, a, it is about, um, you know, that actually they've come to see you. Right. And if you have to share with them. You have to give mm -hmm. them something to see. As well as giving them something to see, as an evil heel wrestler, Casper will also have to give the crowd something to hear. And that's his big worry. I want you to think of voice as a physical activity. So we, 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 okay. we tie your voice into the thing you're used to working with, which yeah. is your body, because it is a physical activity. So instead yeah. of worrying about the product, the voice, think about, well, am I being committed and confident yeah. and sure here? And then the voice won't get shaky. Now, shall we go, shh, 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 shut up. Shut up! That's it, really from here. Shut up! Shut up! I'm the greatest. I'm the greatest. Expect no mercy. Expect no mercy. That's it, and again, I will destroy him. I will destroy him. I will destroy everybody. I will destroy everybody. How's that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's fine as long as you don't look after us. Maybe not. OK. Sorry. No, no, OK. Just keep mean. Threaten. Mean, mean, mean. Keep doing that. Just keep being mean. Really mean. Yeah. Like a madman. Yeah, and just find some nasty. See, just explore what nasty. Now, really get the eyes being mean. Because I think the tendency is to go mean. Up. Mean yeah, is like don't. shut. Them. Yeah, but keep it. Be mean. Psycho. Really, really <laughs> threaten to you know to do some damage with your eyes. Just no, with the eyes, with the eyes. That's it. Casper's been wrestling for three days now. A little bit more killer instinct in there. He's progressed from the nutcracker to the flying crossbody. And his trainers have given him a few trophies along the way. Oh, my collarbone. This is, uh, that's John Ryan. That's Dave. Um, John Hall. And uh, those are Andre. So, um, that's the result of wrestling over the last couple of days. Um, are you looking forward to this morning? Um, I don't know what's going to happen this morning, so I'm a bit, I'm a bit worried, to be quite honest. Casper's got good reason to be worried, as Tank's about to teach him the dreaded clothesline. All right, and then we'll throw you. All right. You come out. I'm not sure what to expect, but I've got it in my mind that I'm going to knock you down. All right, so I'm right on top of you. And as soon as you come at me, I will crack you, right, with a lot of force. And you're going to try and protect yourself with your, um, your break for which you've learned. OK? I don't suppose you can half do it, can you? Um, Andre might know a special way of half doing it, do you? Not, not, not of hanging out. There you go, all right. All right. <laughs> the end of the base, the effect of the move is always like with the flying cross body on it, it's the momentum, it's the momentum that makes it work. Yeah, if you go down half, half hearted and sloppily, you're not going to do the break full properly. You could end up worse, all joking aside. You want to do it? All right. Let's take it easy. Yeah. Ah. You all right? Good break full. Yeah.
Casper's natural instinct is to grab under Dave's arm, but that just prevents him from doing his breakfall correctly. It's, it's logical, isn't it? It's a normal reaction for a novice. <laughs> All right. Again. You didn't grab on then? No. Right. And you seem to fall better. And I think part of the Yeah. Obviously, we're not going to wrap you in cotton wool, you know? Obviously. But at the end of the day, there are certain things that are just inevitable, and there are certain things we can't not do, and there's certain things you just do and not shortcuts to. And one of the things there isn't a shortcut to is pain, I'm afraid. And do you have, you know, like the bruises and things, and yeah. there's just nothing we can do about that. We can show you how to break full properly, we can show you everything we know to minimise things. But there are certain things you just, it's there, and you, you, you can't avoid it, I'm afraid. I didn't bang my head. Is that coming? No, I just bang my back. I think I still grabbed your arm, didn't I? We got both arms then. Oh, sorry. The aggression side of it, I don't, I don't think it's coming very naturally to me. The, um, uh, a lot of the, like I said, most of the people that turn up there want to get hit, they want to get into a tussle, they want to throw themselves at each other and flatten their opponent on the floor and, and take a lot of um, battering. Um, I don't know if it's an adrenaline rush for them or endorphins or something like this. I, I don't know technically what it would be, but it seems that they, they get off on it. Um, I'm not really at the moment. I'm not getting off on it. It's not... But I, it's more... At the moment for me it's a challenge and I want to I want to succeed, I want to be able to do this. I want to pull this off. Um, that's what's driving me through, that's what's making, that's helping me get through the pain um, of, of the constant bruising in the same place over and over and over and over and over again. Before Casper's big test, he has to decide upon a name and persona for his evil heel wrestling character. So Dave, John and Andre are having a brainstorming session. Count or the Duke or the... Just something that, that his persona can carry off. Do you know what I mean? Blue Blood. Blue Blood, yeah. yeah. That's a good name. Is it Blue Blood? being done, isn't it? Is it? No, not the actual name wasn't being done. No, Blue Blood. Yeah. yeah. You've got to hit a raw nerve with people. You've, mm. you've, you've got to remind them and point out to them the, how much better you are and the little things that hurt people, like you know, how much more money you've got than them now. They mm. must be spending the last few pence to come and see you. They've got nothing <laughs> left for the week, but you've got plenty, and you're, you know. Just yeah. you know, things that things are gonna you know that are gonna touch a nerve. Things that are gonna upset people. You know. Have there been any like highwayman type characters? Or Dick Turpin. Like? That'd be good. Yeah. And then the highwayman. Mm -hmm. I'm a dandy highwayman. <laughs> was that was that the song? Yeah. yeah. Adam and the Ants. Yeah. You know, yeah, put a striker brush your nose. With your ballet yeah. training, everything will be over. Yeah, yeah. Emphasize. Yeah. Stand and deliver. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Stand and deliver. After much discussion. Casper's character has been decided. He'll be an evil heel wrestler known only as... The Highwayman. Casper needs an image to go with his newfound character, and so Tank's taking him to Liverpool for a fitting at wrestling costumier's Edward Tyra where they're joined by another wrestler, the world-class athlete, Paul Volt. T-shirt, OK, because I'm Paul Volt, world-class athlete. Yeah. Take it off, and then I just wrestle in the shorts. Casper's going to need two custom-made outfits, one for a practice match in a few days' time, and the other for his final test as the highwayman. The only problem you'll find, and I get this, because I'm bare-chested, people will slap you there so yeah. hard. Yeah, you will have more than them little tiny bruises there. <laughs> Yeah. Hey. Hey. The little nipple thing you've got going on. Have I got this the right way round? <laughs> that looks... I don't know. <laughs> give, give us a pose. Give us, Is it? Give us a proper round. pose. Turn round. Yeah, I'll tell you. Let's turn round. Yeah, see, I've got it right Oh, God. Come on. It highlights your bruise, Tim. It highlights your bruise, well. Yeah, your suntan's not going too well. <laughs> what with the pink and the red? Oh. I'm not sure about the pink. <laughs> Take, take, the, take the top down. Take the top. Okay. That's a bit too much, actually, <laughs> yeah. though. You're probably kind of yeah. I'm not keen on the pink. You're all right, man. 
See, that's okay. I'm not sure about the red colour, but no, I think well, that combination is good. Yeah, that's a great I would just probably have a different colour here. What it does here as well, it cuts it cuts on your on your shoulders, right? And it makes your shoulders you're quite you're broad anyway, but it makes it makes your shoulders look wider than they are. Are we actually doing two outfits? Yeah, though? what yeah, yeah. So I'll wear yeah. this for the Well you'd wear something like this for my first You get rid of them, Ow. right? <laughs> you get... <laughs> Ow. Ow, you're a wrestler. It's, it's so carry on, isn't it? Do you know what I mean? It's so carry on. <laughs> but you get rid of them, but you could do the, the something similar to to uh, that, definitely, definitely, because so that, that yes. is brilliant. I still go with the cape to so get two. used to getting because you've got to build your character at the yeah. end of the day. Because look, because the thing is, as a highwayman, you'd have to come out and cover yourself. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, you know, and then reveal yourself slightly. With you, maybe you got the big, big frill down there, you know, and then you'll have your. <laughs> <laughs> but then, you, you, you need know, to get rid of that. <laughs> Casper's starting to live the life of a wrestler. When not training, he's to be found relaxing at home with Dave. Or watching Japanese women's wrestling. She cannot possibly have children after that. Or simply down the pub. But after nearly two weeks, there's hardly any time left for relaxation, as Andre has arranged for Casper to have a practice match in front of an audience in 24 hours' time. So the training is getting tougher. Cover up and take yourself and have a think. And get your breath back. Just calm down, Casper. Think. He manages to get out of two pinholes, but finally, with his arm locked behind his back, Casper has to submit. Yeah. Andre's getting concerned about his progress. Obviously, at this stage of the game, anyone is going to miss opportunities, and you are missing opportunities. I get into a situation where I know that there's something I could do, and I just can't think quickly enough. Maybe that's because I'm panicking and I'm not. A lot of the time, you're not thinking very well on your feet. You know, seriously, for the stage of the game, well, I think so anyway. But like I say, by no, by no means, by any stretch of the imagination, are you anywhere near being the finished product. Mm. And we're still going to have a job on our hands, even just on making the progress you're making to get things done within the time we've got. Because, you know, you, you can't make someone, you give someone years of experience in a month. Being punched and kicked is very weird. I think not least because I'm so used to doing things on a certain beat of the music. Um, everything's choreographed, I normally do. But the wrestling, nobody knows. You turn around, turn your back on someone, spin around and there's a fist hurtling towards your face. Tomorrow is the, my first match and I'm really worried. It's two weeks in and Casper's first costume a rather fetching yet garish number, has arrived just in time for his wrestling debut. Andre has arranged a small show in Sittingbourne for friends and family only. Casper is to go on after Tank and Johnny Moss, also known as the Vigilante, have got the crowd warmed up. But whilst Casper gets changed, Andre is trying to ensure that his confidence isn't completely shattered by asking a favor of Casper's opponent, the notorious Mr. John Ritchie. Because I think, out of anyone, you better deal with a situation I'm not going to put you in now. Could you play with him for a little while? Roll him around a little bit. What, make, make it last a little while? Just make it last a little bit longer. Just two weeks ago, Casper had never even been to a wrestling match. Now he's about to fight a former boxer with over 20 years wrestling experience. Casper doesn't know that John Rich is being told to take it easy. Making his professional debut here this evening, Casper Cornish. Are you ready? Let's get it up. Well won. Casper starts playing the heel from the opening bell by pinning John Ritchie against the ropes, for which he is cautioned by the referee.
But pretty soon, Ridge's experience starts to show. Andre may have told John Ritchie to play with Casper, but he doesn't seem to be sticking to the script. Uh, break the hole, Ritchie, break the hole. Come on, Casper. He's on the road. What's the matter with you? Come in. One, two, three, four. Casper's wrestling against a man who's been a heel for years and knows all the dirty tricks in the book. But Casper's been taught a trick or two of his own, which only serves to annoy John Ritchie. Casper's been punched in the throat which is painful, but works to his advantage. The referee, John Hall, has disqualified John Ritchie. The winner of the match, Casper. Casper started with a win, but more importantly, he's put on a good show for the crowd. It was a huge sense of relief that one, I hadn't broken my neck or, or John Rich's neck, not that I think that would be possible, but, but also it just it felt like it had gone well, and I won, so... Uh, I am a wrestler. I am the high whip. Beware. Be afraid. Despite being full of confidence about his wrestling, it still felt that Casper needs to be more confrontational. So Barbara has taken him to a market to practice with some experts. Are you talking to me? Have you got a problem? Yeah, I got a problem. You're what, talking to me like that for? What's your problem? What you Why are you coming to me? Are you talking to me like that for? Oh, you looking at me like that? What's your problem? Well, I see you looking at me, so what do you want to do about it? <laughs> <laughs> Casper seems to be having trouble pretending to be a tough guy. What would you get him to do to make him look tougher? You did a good thing. You went like this you, when you were doing that. You're like looking out the side of your eye like, I like that. Yeah, yeah, you're just like, you know, you're just... Come on, nurses okay. don't laugh, that's right. it. Nurses don't laugh, they don't also have their hand on their hip. <laughs> I will fight you. Maybe. Oh, you want to have fisty yeah, guts now? We can always just go, you know. You're you got about someone to mind your ring. Well, that's what you're after. Funny you say that. What's that then? Yeah, because I'm a wrestler. Oh, are you really? Yeah. yeah. Oh, I'm a wrestler. Yeah? Yeah. I don't believe you. I wrestle the money out of people's pockets. That's what I do for yeah. a living. Just do yourself a what? I don't want you back around me. <laughs> don't have <ever> a <laughs> <laughs> He may have fooled a policewoman into thinking he's trouble, but if Casper's going to pass as a vicious wrestler, he's got to relish being the evil heel. So the vigilante, Johnny Moss, has been enlisted to bring out the sadist in the ballet dancer. Right, what I want to go through with you is how to be an effective heel. The heel things are like taking the, the regular things, like pins and stuff, but taking more them on one stage more aggressive. Taking every shortcut that you can take, right. every shortcut in the book. I'm saying you're doing an elbow. Plenty of impact. Plenty of impact. So what the gloat about to the crowd. What about that then? Come on! Hey, you like that? See what I'm saying? Now once you've got your own corner, there's a lot of things you can do here. One of my favourites. It's called the chop, like this. Oh. Someone else or? Enjoying yourself? Yeah, loving it. Yeah, come on. And hit him with this. With the palm. Like that. Except 20 times harder. <laughs> oh. oh, no. Right there. Yeah, I've done it. There. The palm wants to be right there in the middle of the chest. Leave him a big hand print. Come on. Yeah, I will have one. Oh, good. Good. <laughs> Sorry. Oh. 
Elbow right in the face. Okay. Now, I'm not going to do it properly now. Mm. I don't want anybody broken jaw, do we? No. Not today. But in, in, the re in the proper match, he'd be wanting to drive your elbow oh. right through their jaw. Okay. Say that. Right on there. Oh. But for now, I'm just going to do it like this. <laughs> Can you try it on me? Okay, again. That's all right, yeah. All right. Of course, in a match, you want to put a lot more force in, wouldn't you? Yeah. Cool, man. Do an elbow to Danny. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Andre and Dave are happy with Casper's progress and have decided to let him play a small role at a show in Telford. Casper is to be embroiled in a dastardly scheme which involves him doing a favour for his old foe, John Ritchie. This is my friend Cassius. Hi, dear. Uh, he's got a match with Paul Volk tonight. OK. He needs to win. Yeah? So, uh... What I would like you to do, in some way, is to come and interfere with the match. It's very important that uh, Paul Volt don't go through any further in these rounds, you know, we want him out now. No problem, John. Nice and Alright, thank you, Mr. Richard. So while Cassius and Paul Volt do battle, a mysterious masked man waits in the wings. Cassius is suffering a bit. And if he looks at any, any point like, like he's going to need some help, I'm going to run out there and I'm going to help him. With his mission to success, Casper's beginning to enjoy himself and feels that he's now ready for more than just a walk-on part. Um, it's just over in a flash. It was over so quickly. I just basically went on and uh, tripped up Paul Vault, and then uh, I was ushered, ushered out. I had a go at a little kid. Are you talking to me? Which was... At least it, well, the journey wasn't wasted, because I think that was the whole point, was to try and get used to the crowd. Yeah! Are you looking at me? I wanted to do more. I wanted to jump in the ring and flatten Paul Vault. I thought that would be funny. Because <laughs> it did. It made me feel like I wanted to go back on and do some more. I really didn't feel like I did enough tonight. Maybe that's the plan. To make me want more of it. Well, if it is their plan, it's worked. Because I do want to get back on. I do want to do more. <sighs> with just a week left until his final test, Casper flings himself into training with a vengeance. He's spending hours down the gym, and he's on a diet of high-protein shakes, in order to put on extra bulk. Ah! That's it. Is that okay? And again. Ah! Barbara's helping him with his screaming, and he's got plenty of opportunity to put it into practice. Tuck your head under. That's it. That's it, At last, the meek ballet dancer seems to have discovered a genuinely nasty streak. Ah, ah, How's that? Yeah, it gets gravelly quickly. Yeah, does it hurt? Oh, no. No. Ah! Finally, furious, screaming and pumped up like a raving lunatic, 
Casper does what every self-respecting wrestler would. He goes to get his hair done. really, really odd. It's like changing from plimsolls trainers into hard shoes and it changes the way you walk and this has certainly changed the way I walk. Not the way I talk, but the way I walk. And I feel like doing this all the time. Going, yeah. And saying, when I agree with people, going, yeah. Uh-huh. Rather than, hmm. The day of the final test has arrived. The wrestlers are appearing at the Lees Cliff Hall in Folkestone, where a special five-man super fight has been arranged that will see the former NWA world champion Gary Steele take on the highwayman and three other up-and-coming wrestlers. Three experienced judges have been brought in to try and spot which of the four challengers is faking it. Steve Ganfield is deputy editor of World of Wrestling magazine. Martin Clark recently became the world over 50s judo champion. And Paul Tyrone was a professional wrestler for over 25 years. Tank, Andre and Barbara are hidden away in a secret room watching the carnage take place. First up to do battle with Gary is J.P. Munro from Hertfordshire. He's been wrestling for three years and his favorite move is a five-star leg drop. Ladies and gentlemen, you are truly in the presence of greatness. So get ready, big man. You're about to go back to school, and this is one lesson that you might find hard to swallow. <laughs> From the opening bell, JP comes out fighting, punching Gary on the back, then throwing him against the ropes before felling him with a flying clothesline. Maybe having his head smashed against the ring has affected his judgment, but JP's five-star leg drop misses its target and allows Gary to execute his favourite finishing move, the belly-to-belly -belly suplex. One, two, three! JP's out for the count. Next up is Tom Silver, also known as Mr Intelligence from Stoke-on-Trent. He's been wrestling for two years, and his favourite move is the standing drop kick. Gary Steele. You're looking at Mr. Intelligence, Tommy Silver. Tonight you've been handed to me on a silver platter. And I'm going to beat you. I'm going to tie you up in knots. I'm going to outwit and befuddle you. And I'm going to pin you. One, two, three. Mr. Intelligence is hoping his wrestling skill will make up for a weight deficit of over four stones. But from the very start, Gary Steele shows his experience by trying a couple of quick pins to finish his opponent off early. The judges watch on as Mr. Intelligence uses an old heel trick of choking his opponent while distracting the referee. Two huge suplexes have knocked the wind out of Mr. Intelligence and Gary Steele pins him for a three count and wins the second bout. Third up is the highwayman, Casper Cornish. He's been wrestling for one month and his favorite move used to be a double seesaw to arabesque, but now it's a reverse sunset flip. Gary Steele, a little message for you. You don't know me, I'm the highwayman, and boy, are you in for a shock. By the end of the match today, I'll be standing and I'll be delivering your defeat in front of hundreds, nay, thousands of onlookers. I hope you're prepared, because I'm going to be taking the high road. You're going to be taking the low road, because I am the highwayman. The first thing Gary does is get the highwayman in a body lock, throw him to the canvas and rip the mask from his face. Despite this early setback, the highwayman quickly rallies by reversing Gary's wrist lock and then trying out his favourite move, the reverse sunset flip. Oh. 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 Did I 
<laughs> Barbara's voice training is coming in handy as the high woman gets a chance to confront his critics. impressing his mentors, but is the highwayman doing enough to fool the judges? I want to say I'm sort of surprised, Andre, but it's just put together everything, yeah, yeah, everything we've told, we've told them. Because it's the same with, yeah, it's the same with all the, the, the the vocal and stuff, it's sadly, it's yeah. just really yeah. owned it all. You're tired. Hey, Are you? Two matches and you're tired. Come on, then. Come on, then. Come on, then. See? Go! Go! Just like his last two opponents, Gary's beaten the high women with a belly to belly suplex. Passport was very good. The final wrestler is Mike Smith, also known as Mike Mendoza from Eltham. He's been wrestling for 18 months and he likes to finish opponents off with a running power slam. Gary Still, the top dog around here. The man who goes around with a big grin on his face, so proud of everything he's achieved in wrestling. With his title belts and all of his trophies. Well, that stops right here. Tonight, you're going down to me. I'm going to break you in half just because I can, and you know it. Mike can threaten all he wants, but although it's Gary's fourth fight in a row, he starts off well with a leg takedown and a choke hold. Mike's put up a good fight. But as soon as Gary gets him into a full Nelson, the inevitable suplex is bound to follow. It's all over, and Gary has dispatched of his four challengers, J.P. Monroe, Mr. Intelligence, The Highwayman, and Mike Mendoza. But will the judges be able to spot the fake? Uh, I'd say Mike Mendoza needs a lot more experience he's ever so young. Go on. <laughs> the one I th most probably... He's still done a good job, so I don't want to put him down. I thought, is it Mr Intelligence? Oh, great! Yeah. <laughs> Who do you think was the fake? This could be a tricky one as well. I mean, I mean we got two out of three, but... You know, we didn't do it for three, did we? We've done it for three out of three. Yeah. I'd say it was Mike Mendoza, the last one, I think. Oh! Yes. Yes. What would you say if I was to tell you that the highwayman, up until a month ago, was a principal male ballet dancer who had never been to a wrestling match before, never been in the ring before, never seen a wrestling match before? I, I would be very impressed with that. That is a shock. That is a very big shock to me. <laughs> very big. Well... <laughs> It's a bit embarrassing, isn't it? Um, <laughs> <laughs> I've gone quite bright red now. I think it's... Uh, no, well, it shocked me. If he ain't got a career in belly dancing, he's got a career in wrestling. No, he's done very, very well. Yeah, he's done very, very well indeed. Yeah, it's quite shocked me, that is. Yeah. Casper doesn't yet know that all three judges have decided in his favour. Well, uh, I don't quite know how to put it, really. Bad news, really, I suppose. One, two, three judges. Got it right! <laughs> Hug me! <laughs> well done! That's it. That's fine. So, I hope you're very happy. There we are. I'm really proud of you. Well done. Thanks, Thanks very much. much. I'm, I'm sure we'll feel the same mistake. Yeah, the one thing Barbara picked up on is how much more vocal and nasty you became. Yeah. So I'm glad you're moving on. <laughs> <laughs> and when I first met you, it was a nice, well spoken, quiet chat. Yeah. That was. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's, he's like in your bone, yeah, yeah. He's in your bone, especially with hair like that.
It's the morning after Casper's success and time for him to say goodbye to his mentors. Here's me home, here's me heart. Good luck to you. All right. Great. It was wonderful to work with. John, my hero, Ryan. Give me a hug, man. Give me a hug. Give me a hug. Give me a hug, man. You have to pay for it. Thanks so much, Ray. Thank you for having me. Dave, you have to hug me. I think I'm going to really miss them. I won't tell them that, of course, because the wrestlers don't do that sort of thing. Arms up to the front and open to the sides. Very good. Lift them up, up here. Rise up onto your toes and turn around. Very good. And rise up onto your tippy toes and turn around. Good. Very nice. Very nice. Does my my phone look big? <laughs>